So you've often heard me talk about uh, trying to be self-sufficient and uh, I was just thinking back on how we've done on that challenge um, and we've done fairly well and I'm thinking about well, what vegetables have we bought this year. Uh, we've about three or four times we've bought some courgettes and that's mainly for kind of stir fries and things. We bought a few tomatoes, cucumber. Um, we bought one aubergine because my niece is a vegetarian, so it was for a starter for Christmas dinner. Um, what else have we? Oh, onions. We're definitely not self-sufficient in onions. We need to grow a lot more, so I don't think we'll ever be self-sufficient in onions because. One is space and the second is because we've got white onion rot, so we're not going to be self-sufficient in that. Um, what else have we bought vegetable-wise this year? I think that's about it, uh, which isn't too bad, but we are still in the middle of winter and we've got quite a few more months to go until we um, start cropping from the allotment and the garden. We've done very well with things like salad, partly because I've been sowing and growing a lot of microgreens to, to top that up and using pea shoots in stir fries and things. We've still got quite a lot of crops in the allotment like brussels and um, brassicas, like calabries, purple sprouting broccoli will be coming soon. We've had quite a lot of root vegetables. So that's not too bad. Um, so all in all, we've done quite well, but obviously there are, there's room to improve and I'll be looking to see how we can do that. Um, like with the Swedes, we, we only had a few, but I want to try and improve the Swede growing uh, for 2022. And the carrots were fantastic, which means that we'll probably be using the deep tubs that we've been growing in, the water butts, uh, for something else. So watch me as I decide how we're going to use those butts slightly differently. Um, but yeah, we're not doing too bad. But as I said, there's always room for improvement. And without a polytunnel, I must say, um, it is difficult. And we're never going to have tomatoes and cu oh, cucumbers. That's the other thing that we've, we've bought. So we're never going to have tomatoes and cucumbers during the winter and we'll always need to top up um, tomatoes and cucumber through the year. But what we try to do is minimise how much we do buy. So for me, this is now the start of the sowing season um, and the growing season. And today I'm going to start off my onions. Now normally I don't grow very many um, onions from seed. I mean I grow as many as I can because we absolutely adore onions. Well I absolutely adore onions um, but we do have white rot, onion white rot on our site so we can't, we're quite restricted to where we can grow uh, and also to grow the amount of onions that I would need I'd probably need a field on my own. So um, we do restrict how many onions we grow. However, this year, um, because we've replaced the strawberry beds, I'm going to intercrop the strawberries with some onions. And I'm going to do that from seed because you do run the risk that if you put um, uh, the onion sets in, you could bring in onion rot. You could bring in white onion rot. So, uh, I now will grow my onions from seeds to try and prevent that. So I've selected a number of onions that I'm going to plant today. And we've got some Alice Craig and some Bedfordshire Champions. And I got these as free seeds and they're pretty reliable um, and they did very well for us last year. So I'll definitely be growing those. I've never had a lot of success with red onions, but I've always been passionate about growing this French onion called Rose of Roscoff. Um, and it's very famous because in the uh, olden days, these are the onions that you used to see Frenchmen 
mainly Frenchmen, uh, cycling around England with the strings of onions around the nets. And this is the onion they used to bring. So I've got a few packets of that to put in and that will be my kind of red onion. Um, I've grown Red Baron a couple of times, but not necessarily very successfully. But I'm going to give it another try because I've got some space. And I'm going to grow also some Santerio. I grew these from sets last year and they were terrible. Not because the sets were terrible, but where I planted them, uh, we had white rot and also we had the onion moth come down and infect quite a lot. So they didn't do well at all, but I'm gonna give them another go from seed uh, and I'll plant those in. And then the last one probably that I will grow is this one. I bought this seed um, a year or so ago, but didn't plant it and it's called Walla Walla. Great name. Now Walla Walla is meant to be the sweetest onion possible. So you can eat it raw. Um, I've never grown it before and I'm going to give it a grow, go this year. I'm not quite sure how you would use it. Maybe you just eat it raw on your burger or in your salads and stuff like that. But I think it'll be a bit of fun. And I love the name Walla Walla. So these are the onions I'm going to sow today. Um, I'll show you one lot of sowings because I also sow um, multi seeds. So I'll put three to four onions in a cell because I'm not really looking for big onions. I'm looking for a lot of medium to small onions for the kitchen. And um, we'll get more out of the space if we multi sow them. The shallots, I'm going to wait a few more weeks before I sow those. Um, some people will be sowing them now, but I'm actually going to leave my shallots for another few weeks before I sow them. And what I will do is sow them in this uh, seed cells that I've prepared here and I've given it some water. And, and this thing, you pop on the top and you press it down nice and evenly. And it makes kind of like dimples in the compost. And then I just pop in three, three seeds to four seeds preferably no more. However, if more came into the cells, I wouldn't worry too much because as they start to grow, you can always thin them out and use the thinnings as spring onions. So in some ways you get even more of a crop from, from the space. Um, I'm not sure how much seed I've got to do that, but I'll definitely be aiming for between three and four seeds per cell. So we'll kick off with the rows of Roscoff. And as I said, I'm only going to show you one of these, uh, how we sow them, because the rest is exactly the same. Um, these seeds I got from a Robinson's Seed Company. I don't know if anywhere else does them, but I've always, it's the only place I've ever found them. And they do also sell them as uh, onion sets as well, but they're quite hard to get hold of. And also since Brexit, it's, also, it's been even harder because these are, I think, brought in from, from France. So, as I said, so I normally, some people just go like that. Um, I normally will pop them in to my hand and then just do a small pinch. I feel that I can control the seeds a bit more. So three to four seeds per cell, <coughs> excuse me, in each cell like this and it does as I said it doesn't matter if it's not exact because it's very easy just to thin them out and use them as spring onions as you go along now these are meant to be, uh, they're not so much a red onion, more of a kind of pinky type onion. And they're not hugely strong, so they have a sweetness to them. Uh, that's what it says on the packet. 
I, as I said, I haven't really successfully grown them yet, so I'm looking forward to hopefully um, having these in our meals and salads. So I'll just stop there and show you. I then put on a little bit of vermiculite. Um, and the reason I do that is so that it keeps the seeds damp. And, but lets the light in. Because one thing about germinating seeds is they like to be damp, but not wet. Uh, otherwise, if the, the topsoil can dry out very easily and then the seeds won't germinate or they'll start to germinate and then just die off. So it's important to try and keep the seeds damp to help them grow. And then what I'll do is I'll stack them all and I'll leave them indoors in the house. We've got some racking that we've just put up. Um, <clears throat> Luckily, we've got a very tolerant household because the seeds start going all over the place in the house. But then I'll stack them. But as soon as I see that they start to germinate, I'll unstack them, give them a day or two, and then start moving them down to the greenhouse because they don't need heat. They might, they do to germinate, um, but then they're pretty, they're very, very hardy. So they will be able to go out into an unheated greenhouse. So I just sprinkle a little bit of this on the top of the seeds like so and I'll do this on the whole of the box once I've finished sewing everything so you don't need a lot um, but it is really good when you're sowing small seeds uh, to use this so I'll do this box then sew them and stack them let them germinate and um, and then as I said once they've started to germinate I'll pop them in the greenhouse so it's the same process for all the onions and the uh, shallots as well and I'll also probably pop in some spring onions today and again it will be exactly the same process so I'll probably pop in some um, the Japanese uh, onions and I'll film that for you in a bit uh, and some red spring onions just because the Japanese onions are quite robust and can take the cold weather. So I've got some labels for each of the onions which I'll pop in but because I'm stacking them I can't put them in uh, now so I'll just tend to lay them just on the side with the multi-seed seeds, these onions, um, as they start to grow, they'll push each other out so that there's plenty of room. So you get more onions in a, in a space, but you get some decent sized onions. So I'll show you that as the season goes on, how the onions will grow and make room for one another as they do grow. The other thing I'm gonna sow today are some spring onions, as I said. So there's Lilia, the red onion, which is very nice, and um, Ishikura, which is a Japanese spring onions. These don't bulb and they're quite hardy. So although the packet says sow in February, I'm going to start sowing them now because I can keep them in the uh, unheated greenhouse once they've germinated. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm going to multi-sow them in these cells but I'll put between eight and 10 seeds in each of the cells, unlike the onions, which were three to four. So I should do those in one second. And then the last thing I'm going to sow at the moment are some leeks. <clears throat> and you're probably thinking, blimey, it's a bit early for sowing leeks, but these are actually summer leeks. And I tried them for the first time last year. Um, and this, these Lincoln uh, summer leeks, it actually says on them, that it is a summer leek. I've never seen summer leeks before, but I got them as a freebie in a magazine and I thought, oh well, I'll give them a go. And um, I put some of these in and some of these nipper and used them both as summer leeks and they were lovely. And it was really, it was a really nice treat to get some leeks really early to put on the barbecue. So you pick them when they're a lot thinner um, and they're a lot more tender and sweet. And again, I'm going to multi-sow these, probably about five, about five seeds per cell. 
uh, in the same way as I've done the onions and the spring onions. So some summer leeks and then later on I will grow one lot of um, winter leeks just so that I get them in late autumn. This year I sowed them a bit too late so we didn't get, actually get them until late than, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, late winter. Um, so I'd like some kind of winter leeks a bit earlier this year and then I'll grow some more later on in the year so we've got a bit of succession for the for the leeks. The other day I started to sow my chilies, peppers and aubergines. So these are the peppers I've planted um, and these are the various varieties. So I've got six varieties of sweet peppers and they're in and you can just see that um, a couple of them, I don't know if you can see that, have just started to germinate and I put those in about five days ago so and I put them in the propagator. <clears throat> So these are the sweet peppers uh, that I'm going to try. And these ones are aubergines and the ones with... Hello, do you want to see too? <laughs> um, the ones with the vermiculite are the cells that I've actually sown. So these are some of the aubergines um, and the varieties. <clears throat> I'm planning on buying a couple of um, aubergines that have been, what's the word for it, um, grafted. <laughs> I'm planning on buying a couple of grafted uh, aubergines as well, so I haven't sown too many of these. But um, these were from somebody I've linked up with on Instagram, Susie. So she's sent me a couple of these aubergine seeds to try, particularly the sort of this Japanese white uh, and this one, and I think there's one or two more. So thank you, Su Susie, shout out to you for seed sharing. And then we've got the chilies, uh, and these are the varieties of chilies that I've sown, and there's quite a few there. Um, they're very popular and I've got somebody who cooks Thai food and has asked me for some chilies and we've been making chili jam so I'm trying a few different chilies to see how they come out in the chili jam um, as well but today just adding to that so I put all of these in about five days ago but adding to that I'm growing some paprika um, and somebody that we know is from Bulgaria and she bought the paprika seeds back for me and a paprika, a hot and a sweet paprika seed. And so I'm just going to sow these today and I'll put them into the, into this cell here. I think I might be having a helper. Are you coming to help, are you? Are you coming to help? Is that what you're doing? Um, so these are the sweet paprika seeds that she bought over for me at the end of, uh, in mid to late summer. So I'm just going to put a few of these in, not too many, because I've got quite a lot going on with all of these. And also I can, I can swap plants. I like to put a few more than I need because I can swap plants and also give some away. We've had quite a few new starters on our allotment site and I'm sure that they would welcome some uh, spare seeds or plants as well. So that's the paprika sweet. And I shall just put a little bit of vermiculite over the top. And pop the stick in quick so that I don't get too confused which is which and then this is the hot paprika I'm not actually sure what the difference is um, and how paprika uh, plants are different but I shall enjoy finding out about paprika so these are the hot ones I don't know how they're different from say chilies 
um, and our is paprika just a different sort of uh, variety of, of uh, chili seed but there we go we'll find out so there's the hot paprika there and a little bit of vermiculite on the top to keep them nice and warm and I shall pop all of these back and you can see these Michu Pishu um, chilies. These were saved seeds from uh, chilies that I grew last year. Um, and you can see how fast they've actually come up, much faster than the, the bought seeds. So I'll be pricking those out in a few days. So these are the chilies, the aubergines, and the peppers ready for next year. I decided that um, I would also plant a couple of these tomato seeds as well called Red Robin. I don't normally sow tomatoes uh, at this time of year. It's, for me, it's far too early. And uh, the reason why I'm doing it <coughs> is because I know that these will not go outside. These are going to be grown indoors. So I can start a couple of tomatoes early. Last year, I took some uh, tomato plants to a local hospital and they grew them in the staff room and they were eating tomatoes off them um, all year. And they were, I think I gave them um, something like sun cherry and um, sun gold, one of each. And they really enjoyed it and they'd pick them off and put them on the staff uh, table and eat them at lunchtime. But those tomato plants are really big, but they're delicious. So I've tried to hunt down a smaller tomato, but I don't really know what the flavour is going to be like. I've never really grown smaller tomatoes, partly because I've never found uh, a good tomato that's got a good taste. But I'm going to give these a try. So I'm going to just pop a couple of seeds in for now as early ones. And then I'll probably sow some more later on so they've got a continual crop. And if they are horrible or not very nice, I can grow or give them some of the other tomatoes. So I'm just going to pop these in now. So I'm going to sow them in my little seed tray with the um, aubergines. Uh, similar family. And you've seen me, how I, how I do this. So I'm not really going to uh, feature the, the sowing of it that much <clears throat> but uh, yeah so I shall just pop a few of these seeds in it's always tricky oh, it's quite a few seeds so I think I'll pop in I think I'll do because they don't all germinate I'll do four um, as I said I'm going to put some more in a little later but this is just to give them a little try so four seeds in there called red robin and again a little bit of vermiculite and these will go into the propagator until they've germinated and then I'll prick them out so <clears throat> it will be interesting to get some feedback from the nurses and other staff, physios, etc., uh, at the hospital. They can tell me what it's like. So thank you for joining me on my channel today. I um, hope your sewing goes really well. Wherever you are, happy sewing. Bye-bye.